Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about the health information management degrees. What college degrees can you get with this health information management? Well, first, I'm going to start off by saying this. If you are wanting to sit for a registered health information technician certification or a registered health information administrator, you have to make sure that the program that you are going through for health information management is approved by the American Health Information Management Association. That is the only association who gives out those designations. So make sure that when you are signing up for your college program that you have gone to the AHIMA website at ahima.org, A-H-I-M-A.org, and you make sure that your particular school has an approved AHIMA program, okay? I have heard from many people who have gone through the health information management program at their college, and it was not approved by AHIMA, so therefore they cannot sit for those designations, and it becomes a problem when they go out into the workplace and they need to have that particular designation or degree, okay? So let's start off by talking about what's the difference between the two. All right. So an RHIT or registered health information technician is the associate's degree. They are typically auditors for inpatient or outpatient setting. Okay. Or a variety of settings, really uh, the ER or um, uh, nursing homes, things like that. They're typically the ones that do a lot of the, uh, they are the worker bee, to put it colloquially, <laughs> okay? Uh, they do a lot of auditing. They do a lot of supervisory, like lead type uh, roles. And a lead is like, um, sometimes you have like a supervisor and then you have a lead, a lead coder, and then you have your other coders. So basically, like a lieutenant, uh, <laughs> just to put it in those kind of terms. Um, so... Those people do things like that, okay? If you have the bachelor's degree, which is the registered health information administrator, uh, those are the ones that typically run hospitals. They run medical groups. Uh, they are on the business side of the house. They may do some coding, but very that's not really what their market is. Their market is the business side. They are the ones that are running uh, like the information side of the, the hospitals. And they are the ones collecting all the data and they look at all the data and they look at, you know, what's going on here and what's going on there. And, and they're the ones that are looking at the money side of the house. That is their whole part of their, their job. Okay. <laughs> so just so you guys know that there's a difference between the two. Now, if you are in college and you want to get a degree, that's great. Uh, does it help? Sure. I mean, it's, it's nice to have a degree. And what's also good about getting your degree is that you get externships, okay? A lot of times for these, to finish these degree programs, you have to have an externship. It's where you go to a facility and you will spend time working there and you will be learning from the people that are on staff and they basically will come in and you will co you will go and you will work there and they will show you what to do. I've had the extreme privilege of uh, working with a couple of people who came in uh, as students to do an externship at my facility and I've been able to sit there with them. And it was so nice to be asked uh, to do that task because uh, the RHIA <laughs> for my hospital, uh, she was actually the one who asked, she's the chief of our department, and she had asked me, hey, Blue, um, we have a student coming in. Do you think that you can sit with them? Uh, they're, they're getting in their degree. He was actually getting his degree for the last one that I sat with. He was actually getting his degree for the um, RHIA. So he was going for the bachelor's. <laughs> and uh, so I said, yeah, sure. And so I met him. He spent the day with me. He shadowed me. And uh, I basically talked to him and I, I kind of gave him like a class like I normally do with people uh, and just telling him basic things and answering all of his questions. And uh, I had some records that I had blacked out all of the um, 
personal identifiable information. And these were the example records that I use whenever I'm giving a class. So I did have him look at those to see how he would code those. And that was good practice for him because he was sort of confused about um, evaluation and management. Even though he doesn't, the way that is set up is he doesn't really have to do that part of it because he's going to be doing the managing side of the house. But he said he would like to know as much as he can because in his program, they had briefly touched on it. And so he really wanted somebody to help him to better understand it. And since evaluation and management is one of my strong suits, <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do this. So I worked with him on that. I explained to him the breakdown of the evaluation and management tool. And he was very happy at the end because he was like, okay, now I get it. Because somebody else had tried to explain it in, in my facility. Somebody else had tried to explain it, but it didn't, he wasn't, it wasn't explained in a way that was helpful for him. So I noticed as I'm speaking to him that I could see that he's a very visual learner. So I started showing him different things on how to get to these, uh, different levels and things like that and, and what sort of things that I would think of that would be more helpful for him. And so he's like, wow, you know, I didn't know any of this stuff. And he didn't know about evaluation and management, EM University. <laughs> uh, I love that website. I'm just telling y'all. Okay. Uh, so if you have a chance, check it out. Um, emuniversity.com. I will be leaving it in the uh, description box below as well. So, uh, Working with students, you know, it's it's always fun to see like their energy and and what what are they thinking and and how they are preparing themselves for this new adventure. And he was very excited about it, and so it's always good to see that. You know, it's it's very promising. So, yes, <laughs> RHIA is if you want to be like the chief of a hospital, chief of a department, that's where you're going to be looking at that. Um, RHIT, again, is a worker bee. That's the one that's going to be doing a lot of the coding and stuff. So they're, they're doing the technical side of the whole thing. You don't necessarily have to have a degree uh, to become a medical coder. Obviously, you can get a certification. And there are plenty of certifications <laughs> uh, to be found on either, either association website. There are two major medical coding associations the American Health Information Management Association, which is the one that's responsible for the degree programs. And then there's the um, American Academy of Professional Coders. They do not have a degree program. They have certifications. So it's something completely different. Uh, they are two separate entities, okay? I always recommend that you guys check out either website, okay? I happen to belong to the American Health Information Management Association, but I do recommend that you check both of them because every association has its benefits, okay? And I don't think one is over the other. I always let you guys have your own choice and I, and I don't advocate for one over the other. Although if you ask me, I will recommend AHIMA or the American Health Information Management Association because that is my association. It is because I know them. That's why. And I've been with them for my entire career and I have been with them since day one. And I really appreciate my association. I've learned a lot from them. I have, I mean, I've had so many more opportunities because of them. And so that's the reason why I recommend, <laughs> why I recommend them. But I wanted to make sure that I did this video. Uh, somebody did ask me about uh, the degree programs and uh, some of the things that you can expect, some of the classes you can expect to be taking uh, if you choose to go health information management route uh, in college. Uh, you're going to be taking anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, um, pathophysiology. You're going to be taking like medical law, medical ethics. Um, there's also like computer programs that they're going to uh, tell you about. And then if you're going for the bachelor's degree for the RHIA, it's going to be more of like your HR, your your communication skills, um, organization sort of courses, things like that, uh, big facility type deals. That's where you're going to, um, your focus and study is going to be. So just so you guys are aware and you know, and um, sometimes 
people choose HIM because they want to be in the health care field but they don't necessarily want contact with patients. We have zero contact with patients. All we deal with is the providers. And sometimes we talk to the nurses because they talk to the providers. <laughs> so sometimes we have to incorporate working with them as well. Uh, sometimes the nurses ask us questions. It all depends, but we have zero contact with patients. So that is something that's so good. Our function as, as the, um, at the healthcare uh, information people is very, very important. We are the, the reason that the hospital is able to generate revenue because if you, know, you have all of these documents, they have to be coded properly and we are the ones that code them properly. Uh, whether you have a degree or whether you have a certification, okay? Uh, I have a certification. I am a certified coding associate of the American Health Information Management Association. I have more things going on in the background that I don't talk about on my channel just yet. Um, I, <laughs> I have to have a Chinese wall a little bit and there's a reason for that. It's, there's a reason for, for my madness. Um, but it's not to keep anything from you guys. It's just me. It's me personally. I have to have this. Um, but things will reveal themselves in time so <laughs> never fear um but i am very proud to hold my credential um i think uh it I, the way i look at coders is this it does not matter what credential you have what degree you have to me to me uh the way i look at a coder is based on what they know how they are willing to apply themselves and how they can look at different information and how they can process that information, you know, information and come up with answers. That's how I look at a good coder. Okay. So, um, you can have lots of degrees and you can have lots of certifications, but if you don't have practical knowledge or, or how to apply it, um, it's, it looks impressive, but that's something that, that I would say this very, very important. You, you have to have that, that drive to want to learn more and healthcare information or health information management is a wonderful field. It does not get boring. <laughs> I will say that it does not get boring, uh, between everything that you are doing, whether you work in a facility or a, a private doctor's office, uh, it, it, it never gets boring. Uh, we're always getting updates every year. And if you are trying to decide if you want to go the degree route or if you want to go the certification route and you're just not sure, my advice to you is this. Yes, it is always a good thing to be as highly educated as you possibly can. Yes, I agree with that. However, I will say this. If you are not really quite sure yet and you don't know if you want to make the plunge into a degree program, but you want to know if you, if medical coding is going to be for you, start off with a certification, go through a certification program through either association, Ahima has one online and so does AAPC and take their certification, try to get yourself in the door as quickly as you possibly can. So that way you can learn to see if you like it. Sometimes people will um, get a degree and decide that they don't like it. And all that money that got spent to get this degree and they're not going to use it. So that's why I always recommend that if you want to start out and you're not sure, start with the certification first. Either the CCS, CCSP, or the CCA, or the CPC. Um, it's CPCA for the beginning part. Um, and then you have to do... A certain amount of hours in order to uh, or a certain amount of experience in order to have the a for the apprentice part removed from the CPC okay uh, for more information check aapc.com uh, start off with the certification is going back to what I was saying uh, and and see if you like it um, I enjoy it then I am very biased <laughs> if you spend any time watching any of my videos <laughs> you know how much I love what I do, how much I love where I work. I love what I do. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's constantly learning. It's for me, I love to read. 
I will spend my weekends reading the New England Journal of Medicine. And I talk about that a lot because while sometimes I don't understand <laughs> what it's saying, um, I'm still reading it anyway because I, I feel when you immerse yourself in a culture such as health information, that is the most um, the more that you expose your mind and your brain to different things, the more educated you are, the better that you understand things. Uh, when you go above and beyond and you try to push to get get it, you get it after a while. Uh, because think about this. We have to read these um, documents all day long that are written by people who have gone to years of medical school. And most of us as coders uh, have never been to medical school. So think about that. You know, we have to match <laughs> in, in intelligence with them, you know. So that's why I say you always got to make sure that you're pushing yourself to, to know and understand. You can have a wonderful career in health information management without a degree. But if you do decide to do the degree route, hey, it just, it's just going to depend on what you want personally uh, for your career. Do you want to be in a supervisory role? RHIT is the way to go. And if you want to be in a director's role, okay, that top level management, then you're, you're looking at your bachelor's degree. Okay. So that's just something to uh, consider, something to think about. Uh, it is exciting. I love it. <laughs> But like I said, that's that's me. <laughs> anyway, I hope that this has answered your question on um, the difference between the two. Uh, please check AHEMA for more information and look on there because it will tell you which schools um, are have the, uh, the program is approved for to sit for an RHIT or RHIA. Okay, you can also ask your school's administrator. Um, whenever you're signing up for, for school um, and to, to make sure that, you know, you will be able to sit for, you know, those designations. So just something to think about. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.